Welcome to Focusing on God's Word with Pastor Everton Jeffers. Focusing on God's Word illuminates the Word of God by explaining the Scriptures and conducting word studies using Scripture to support Scripture in the revelation of His Word. Matthew eleven fifteen said, He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. As he ministered to us today, here now is Pastor Everton Jeffers. A pleasant good day one more time, and it is a joy to be back with you this morning on this program focusing on God's Word. I pray that this program would have been a blessing to you, and if it is, please share. And those of you who have not subscribed, I would ask you to subscribe. This, for me, is a blessing that God has given, and I pray that it will continue to be a benefit and a blessing to all of you who listen. Today we are going to be focusing on the book of Matthew chapter 25, and we are going to be focusing from verse 14 to verse 30. This is a particular subject that I wish for you to grab your neighbor, grab your friends, Grab your relatives and tell them, listen, you need to sit down and hear this. There are basically seven areas of focus in this parable. And the parable is a message, an earthly message with a heavenly meaning. And so when we look at this parable, what I don't want us to do is to try and fit everything in in the physical, in the spiritual. And so what we are going to do today is to focus, as I said, on the seven areas of this parable that you need to pay attention to. I'm going to outline them and then I'm going to go into the study today. Make sure you catch what this parable is saying. The seven areas. The first one is a man. Number two, his servants or stewards. Number three, his free gifts. Number four, their actions. Number five, the master or man's return. Number six, the reckoning. And number seven, the two results. It is important for us to pay attention to this. A man, his servant or steward, his free gift, their actions, the man or master's return, the reckoning and the result. Let's get into the text for today. Verse 14 says, For the kingdom of heaven is just like a man who was about to take a journey. And I want to pause here to make this pellucid for those of you who are not clear as to who this is and what is going on here. Here our Lord, being about to withdraw him, himself bodily, from the presence of earth and to ascend into heaven represented himself as a man going into another country. So when the Bible says that the kingdom of heaven is just like a man who was about to take a journey, it's here referring to the Lord being about to withdraw himself bodily from earth and to ascend into heaven. And so what he did is important because in this first verse that we're focusing on today, this is exactly what he said. And he called his servants together and then trusted them with his possession. Now I specifically highlighted his in the verse both times because it's significant. And the first thing that I want you to realize is that the servants were his servants and he entrusted to them his possessions. 
they were his servant first thing that we need to see in this parable and he gave them his possession very important for the continuation of this study to pay attention to these two next thing the bible said in verse 15 that his servants that were called he gave one five talents another two talents and one one each according to his own ability now this man knew that he was going away the Lord knew that he was going away and what he did he called his servant and he entrusted them with his possession he gave one five gave one two and gave one one but the important factor here is according to their own abilities and then he went on his journey so he did not go on his journey and then send it back he gave it to them personally now there are several things a talent can refer to I'm gonna point out what they may be so that in the study you will get a clear understanding of what was happening as we continue talents are spiritual skills or special skills sorry abilities or gift that God has given to different people it can include his goods his property representing offices abilities opportunities for doing good which he has given let me just repeat that again talents are special skills abilities or gifts that God has given to different people they include his goods his property representing offices abilities and opportunities to do good and he's the one who would give them to different people but what is important to note is according to their abilities there is something about this man that is powerful and that is very wise now why was the Lord able to hold them accountable when he returned as the parable continues the message will become clearer as we shall see as we continue along now let's look at according to their own abilities God distribute abilities and resources to people on earth as he sees fit this is important to note when he gave them he gave them based on what he knew about them even though it's a parable this has a spiritual significance he gave to those persons according to what he knew about them and in giving to them God distributed these abilities and resources to people on earth as he sees fit and expect them to diligently use those resources for godly purposes I want to dive into this a little bit more because a lot of people believe that the gifts and the talents that they have the ability that God has given to them is just for them but every gift every ability that God gives to man he give according to what he knows about them and those gifts and abilities are supposed to be used not just for the benefit of the person who has it or it was given to but for the benefit of others and we're going to see why it is important that we see why this these gifts were given to this man or these men and what was supposed to happen now what is very important here God gave them and he gave them according to what he knew 
they were capable of. None of us on earth have any talent or any gift that were given to us that were not proportionally given by God based on what he knows about us. Every person, regardless of who you are, you have a gift, and whatever that gift is, God gave it to you based on his knowledge of you and the ability that he knows you have to use that specific gift. What we can also see from Matthew, and even in Luke 19, which is the cross-reference from verse 11 to 27, they were made stewards. Notice it was the man's servant, and it was the man's possession. And so they were made stewards of it. Now some people will ask, um, why did you say that they were stewards? And I will show you. After the gifts were given, when the man or owner returned, they had to give an account. In Luke, they had to give an account. In Matthew, they have to give an account. Now, if something belongs to me, I don't need to give an account to anyone. And so every human being on earth should know that that life that you're living, that talent that God has given to you, one day you are going to have to give an account for it. This is a parable, but it has spiritual significance attached to it. It has earthly aspect, but looking beyond the earthly aspect, there are spiritual lessons to be learned, as we shall see. Now, when these talents were given, let's look at the actions of these servants. In verse 16, the Bible says, And the one who had received the five talents went at once and traded with them, and he made a profit and gained five more. Now, if you notice in Matthew, they were not told what to do. But in Luke, they were told what to do with what were given to the extent. Now, the question is, there are similarities between talents and spiritual gifts. I'm going to look at them briefly, and as you know, I basically have half an hour to 35 minutes, so I'm not going to give you both in that time, but I will share the little that I can in the interest of time. Both are gifts from God. So talents and gifts are both from God. Both grow in effectiveness with use. So the more you use them, the more effective you become. Both are intended to be used on behalf of others and not for selfish purposes. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 7, this is what it says. Spiritual gifts are given to benefit others and not ourselves. Spiritual gifts are given to benefit others and not necessarily ourselves. Of course we're going to benefit because we are the users of it. But it, is based, it was basically given for the benefit of others. Now in verse 17 it says, Likewise, the one who had two made a profit, gain two more. The one who had two, he made a profit. He went and he gained two more. The master expects the servant to apply their resources so that they will grow. Even though he did not tell them that, of course he gave them with that intention. And of course they knew it. Because if you notice, the one who got five and the one who got two, he went, uh, they went, sorry, and did something about it. They did. If you look at Matthew 25, 27, you will see exactly that that was intended. He estimated the business potential of each person and divided his money between them in that proportion. God is a wise God. 
He knows exactly what to give and how to give it. And he always gave according to the right measure. So each one, some people say, but why you didn't give all five? Or why you didn't give all two? Or why you didn't give all one? God knew of their varying abilities. And that's the reason why he did what he did. For some of us, we want to become pastors when God calls us to be ushers. For some of us, we want to become ushers when God has called us to be ministers. We have to know the talent or abilities that God has given to us and use it for the benefit and glory of God. Verse 18 says, But the one who had received the one went and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. You notice? Those who had a lot invested, gained five and gained two. But the one who had one, he went and he decided, listen, I'm going to dig a hole in the ground and I'm going to put my master's money in it. Now in 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 10, it is important to note, God has given each of you a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Use them well to serve one another. Listen to what verse 11 says. Do you have the gifts of speaking? Then speak as though God himself was speaking through you. Do you have the gifts of helping others? Do it with all the strength and energy that God supplies. Then everything you do will bring glory to God through Jesus Christ. All glory and power to him forever and ever. Amen. Now looking at these verse, verses, sorry, there are a few things that I want you to see from these verses which are important to note. And what are they? One, God gave the gifts. Two, from his variety. Three, they are to be used to serve others. Four, not only God gave the gifts, but he supplies the energy needed to make these gifts effective. The way we use them should bring glory to God. This, as I said, is important to note. Now, the man's or master's return. In verse 19 it says, Now after a long time, the master of the servants returned and settled account with them. Now this further solidified the fact that they were steward and not owners of what the masters the master gave to them. They were steward and not owners of what the master gave to them. That's why in verse 19 it says, Now after a long time the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. The return of the master, and this is what I want you to note. It might seem as if, and I want to show you how this ties into Jesus' return. It might seem as if the Lord is taking a long time to come. And for some, you might be saying, so long I've been hearing that, and up to now he has never returned. I want to show you that irrespective of how long it might seem, the master is going to return. Listen to this. The return of the master is certain, but the timing is unknown. And the Bible says, no man knows the day, the time, or the hour when the Son of Man shall return. And so this master, even though it took a while to come back or return, he actually returned. This parable depicts how the disciples are to demonstrate their faithfulness as they anticipate the Lord's return. 
in Luke 19.15, when he returned after receiving the kingdom, he ordered that these servants to whom he had given the money be called to him that he might find out what business they have done. So if you look at both parables, the one in Matthew 25 from 14 and the one in Luke 19, you would realize the similarities. Yes, one was given talent and the other the minus, but what we need to understand, watch and see what was expected based on what were given. So the master came back and guess what happened? That time was a time of reckoning. And the one who had received the five talent came and brought his five more, saying, Master, you entrusted to me five talents. See, I have made profit and gained five more. Commendable. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful and trustworthy over a little. I will put you in charge of many things so that you can share in the joy of your master. Verse 22, also the one who had the two talents came forward saying, Master, you have entrusted two talents to me. See, I have made a profit and gained two more talents. Commendable again, his master in verse 23 says, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful and trustworthy over a little. I will put you in charge of many things. Share in the joy of your master. In Luke 19 and verse 17, he said to them, Well done, good servant. Because you prove yourself faithful and trustworthy in a very little thing, you shall now have authority over ten cities in my kingdom. Watch the similarities between both chapters, both books. The one who received the one talent came forward, verse 24, saying, Master, I know you to be a harsh and demanding man, reaping the harvest where you did not sow. Watch this wicked servant and gathering where you did not scatter. So I was afraid to lose the talent, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. See, you have what is your own. Luke 19, 20 says, Then another came and said, Lord, here is your miner which I have kept laid up in a handkerchief for safekeeping. God does not want you necessary to hold on to his talent for safekeeping. God wants you to use his talent for the glory of others, or for the benefit of others, but for the glory of his name, of himself. These two went and one buried it and the other hid it. How in the world did you expect that? to do anything at all in benefiting others. It says, I was always afraid of you because you're a stern man. You pick up what you did not lay down and you reap what you did not sow. Oh my goodness. Some of us on that day will have a lot to answer to God for what we did not do with what he has invested in us. He gave us for us to invest. And some of us are doing absolutely nothing with that which the Lord has given to us. Matthew 12 verse 36 says, But I tell you, on the day of judgment, people will have to give an account for every careless or useless words they speak. Verse 37 says, For by your words reflecting your spiritual condition, you will be justified and acquitted of the guilt of sin. And by your words rejecting me, you will be condemned and be sentenced. 
these two men who, who accuse God of being stern and of what have you and what have you not had no excuse why they did not invest that which God has given to them whether he was stern and look for stuff that he and that is that is so wrong because they're accusing God of being unfair but you know what man will always do that in trying to find an excuse to get himself out of that which he's supposed to do but it's not going to work in first Peter 4 and verse 5 it says but they will have to give an account to him who is ready to judge and pass sentences on the living and the dead every man whether you're saved or not is going to one day stand before the Lord to give an account for that life that God gave to you that you did not utilize that you went and buried that you went and hid that you went and use it for your own glory for your own praise every one of you don't care how rich you are or how poor you are one day you're going to stand before God because you have to give an account for that which God has given to you now we have the two results but his master answered him notice the first were told well done good and faithful servants I'll be making you um, or giving you authority over much cities I will give you a share in what I have but here in verse 26 this is what the Lord said to the one who went and buried the talent you wicked lazy servant you knew that I reaped the harvest where I did not sow and gathered where I did not scatter seed verse 27 then you ought to have put my money with the bankers and at my return I would have received my money back with interest now it's not every aspect of a parable you can apply but when you look at this you wonder what's the significance of this because God is saying listen you knew well you should have done something with what I've given to you but let's move on in the interest of time and this is what it has to say for to everyone who has and value his blessings and gift from God and has used them wisely more will be given and he will be rich in supply so that he will have an abundance but from those who does not have because he has ignored or disregarded his blessings and gift from God even what he have will be taken from him oh my goodness those who don't use what they have will be taken from them verse 30 says this and throw out the worthless servant into the outer darkness in that place of grief and torment they will be weeping over sorrow and pain and grinding of teeth over distress and anger. This speaks to rejection. In Matthew 13, verse 42, it says, And I will throw them into the furnace of fire. In that place, they will be weeping over sorrow and pain and grinding of teeth over distress and anger. If you follow the team in Matthew chapter 8, verse 12, chapter 13, 42, chapters 22, 13, and 24, 51, what you will see throughout is the different destination to these servants. So don't believe that if you don't utilize the gift that you're going to be rewarded just like those who did and so I want you to know that this parable speaks to every human being yes it might be that when he did it he was addressing his disciples 
but you can expand it to the entire world because each one of us was given a talent. That which was supposed to be used for the benefit of others and for the glory of God. I am saying to you today that you have it. Do not be like this servant who went and buried his or the one who placed his in a an handkerchief and then when the master returned, he says, listen, I know you're a harsh person. I know you're a stern person and you look for stuff where you did not sow. Believe you me, that is not going to work. God has given to you one life, every one of us. And with that life, he has given to us talents or a talent. And God expects that those of us who are blessed with it to be used for his glory so that he can empower us so that when we use his talents or gift, it will be for his glory and not for ourselves. One day, for those of us, or those of you, sorry, that are using God's gift for your own benefit, I have a message for you this morning. One day, you're going to stand before God and you're going to answer for it. You notice, God gave, gave all of us one life, but some of us several gifts and some of us many talents. He went away and he's coming back. It might seem as if he's taking a long time, but I want to say this to you. He is coming back. And when he returns, all of us will have to give an account. I want you to focus now on the two destinations, the different results or place that were given to these two different servants. Those who gain, the master welcomed them to his rest, commended them for doing well. Those who hid the talents were cast out into open darkness where there will be weeping, wailing, and gnashing of teeth. Some people think that you know what? We should not go any further with this but to leave it at weeping, wailing, and gnashing of teeth. But let me say this to you. Those of you who hide the Lord's talent and buried the Lord's gift, when the Lord comes or return, you will be judged. You will have to give an account for it. And believe you me, I want you to know this, that God is not willing for any to perish, but for all to come to repentance. Those of you who are sitting down and listening to this message, if you had buried God's talent, if you hid God's talent in something, wherever you put it, ask God to forgive you and to use you so that you can use that talent for his glory. Because one day, when you stand before the Lord and he asks you, what have you done with that which I've given to you? You cannot give him any excuses because he has made available to you that which he knows that you can manage. And those of you who would respond as these men did, who went and buried them, that weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth going to be in hell. God's will is not for you to go there. It was not made for you. But if you, notice what he says, your words are going to judge you. Your words are going to determine where you spend eternity. Believe you me, this word is sure and Christ's return is sure. So if you have never 
had a relationship with Jesus Christ. This is how I'm going to conclude today. Pray this prayer with me. Father, I did not know that I had to give an account for that which you have given to me. I didn't realize I was restored. I thought they, what I had belonged to me. But listening to your servant today, I recognize that there is coming a time that I have to give an account for that which you gave to me. And so I'm asking you to save my life, to come into my life, and to make me into that person that you wanted me to be, so that I'll be able to use your talents and your gift for your glory. Sanctify me by your power and your blood. And today I receive Jesus as my Lord and my personal Savior. And I'm going to use his talent for his glory and for the glory and benefit of others. Amen. May God bless you today. If you have said that prayer, you have just started your new life with Christ. And your talents will be used for the benefit of others and for the glory of God. Have a wonderful day. Thank you for listening to Focusing on God's Word with Pastor Everton Jeffers, a Bible-based study revealing the Word of God. You can follow Pastor Jeffers on God's First Radio at 102.9 FM from 1 p.m. each Sunday or on Abundant Life Radio at 103.9 FM. You can also follow him on Facebook or the YouTube channel. Thank you once again for listening to Focusing on God's Word. May God continue to bless you.